Right, welcome back to the plasma project. Now, it's been quite a delay since the last video. More boards needed designing and as they say the devil is in the details and there were a lot of details. Anyway they're all finished and are now being tested so this video is a small detour to show you around the inside while the case is open. Now if you're interested in building a plasma machine yourself the Philizound website has more details. There's also a simulator and assembler which you can download if you want to explore the potential before committing. These can run on a MS Windows PC or a Macintosh or a Linux. OK, here's a spin round all the boards. Right, this is the 16 button keypad which is normally available to plasma programs as an alternative way of entering values. It's currently in diagnostic mode for simulating some of the toggle switches from the front panel, which as you can see uh, is not connected. Here's the front panel and all the toggle switches are mounted on boards which are daisy chained, so it just needs a single cable to connect to the main unit. So I can control a few things from here. I can stop the program running. I'll start them at slow speed or full speed. I'll turn the speaker on and off and so on. This is the teletype or TTY or OPER screen, operator's console. Now its characteristics depend on which emulation or microcode you are running. The simpler toy emulations, which is what's being run here, use it as a simple scrollable TTY device whereas the more advanced emulation uses it as an opera with addressable coordinates. And the board also contains an amplifier for the speaker, which is a mandatory accessory for mainframes. I'm not sure if there's a standard, but this one is tied to jump instructions, such that the speaker makes a click whenever the program jumps. And the different programs make different sounds, and after a while these noises become familiar and can even be used as a diagnostic aid. And with some carefully crafted loops, they can even play tunes. Here are a few examples of some different programs. The speaker can also be used for tones or musical notes. Now these are controlled by I.O. functions in the order code. And this is probably diverging from the system realism, but should provide some additional amusement. These two boards simulate the tape spools for the two mag tape decks. And of course they include vacuum chambers to give the characteristic twitching movement for added nostalgia. The mag tapes are only available in the advanced emulation, but rather than waste the lights in the toy emulations, they can be accessed directly by I.O. functions. Here's an example made earlier. Does anybody remember the old Decatron tube counters? Here's the advanced emulation using the mag tapes as intended. Now I'll cover them in more detail in a later video. This one just shows mag tapes being threaded and unthreaded. You can see the full spool on the left turns slower than the empty spool on the right. This one is the power board for an external power source. It's wired for both stabilised 5 volts from USB and unstabilised 9 volts from a barrel jack. Now which one is used depends on the final current requirements and at the moment it's low enough for a simple USB supply. 
Now the other two USB sockets are for programming the microcontroller units or MCUs which I'll come on to later. There are also a few connections which are still to be tested. One is for a QWERTY keyboard and the other using these chips are for a MIDI in and out. Now, I know MIDI isn't a typical mainframe interface but it was an opportunity too good to miss. Right, these are the main 16-bit registers which include a 32-bit accumulator with flags and these were all covered in earlier videos but we'll come on to these later when we go into programming in more detail. This one is the MCU or brains of the machine. Now just to recap, the whole aim of the Plasma project is to provide a hands-on lights and switches experience to simulate programming a mini or mainframe system from scratch. This is why it had to be a physical device as opposed to being just a simulator running on a PC. Now a full hardware design is way beyond my scope and patience so all the hardware logic is emulated by the microprocessor in here. Now currently this MCU handles everything but the boards are designed so that a second MCU can be added if needed and this will handle the order code processing leaving the main one to just handle the peripherals. And the main board also has a header for a parallel interface for the customary system printer. And if you know of any actual line printers going cheap, that would be ideal. But for now, I've made do with a dot matrix one. Modern inkjet printers are no good, as they're far too quiet. Right, these lights along the back indicate the status of the machine, whether it's running, halted, breakpoint reached and so on and also the read and write activity for the peripherals. And talking of which, this board below it houses the main peripherals for the system. Now as mentioned, Plasma's aim is to simulate a whole system, so it wouldn't be complete without peripherals such as paper tape readers and punches, mag tapes and disk drives. Now as it's a bit tricky getting hold of real peripherals from way back, these are all simulated using removable SD cards. Here's the six sockets with the socket at the back and each of the sockets represents a device. So this is a paper tape reader, a paper tape punch, two mag tape decks and two exchangeable disk drives. Now each item of media is simulated with a single SD card like this one card represents one item. Now this may seem inefficient given the huge capacities of modern day cards, but I wanted to capture that same look and feel experience of taking a physical tape from a library and loading it. And the other advantage of using one media item per card is that, say, if a tape becomes damaged and unreadable, only that tape is affected. So that concludes the tour. Unless I blow anything up, the next videos will get back to using the machine as a whole and look at some programming examples, including how to get it from an expensive paperweight to doing something practical. In other words, bootstrapping. Thanks for watching.